This week's episode of Dig Nation is brought to you by Coors Light. It's coming soon, the Coors Light Home Draft System, Netflix, GoDaddy, and Rambo. And it's, it's Rambo. Yeah, it's freaking Rambo. That's all, that's all we need. Welcome to Dig Nation. Also potentially hazardous to your health. All right, moving on. Why do you have flies in your freaking house? I know this is Southern California. It's Southern California and I have fruit. You put zombie and you put eerie in the title and I don't want to do it. Dignation.com. Hello, welcome to Dignation episode number 250. I'm Kevin Rose. And I'm Alex Albrecht. Yes, we are holding iPads. Kevin more pronouncedly than I am. <laughs> uh, so the iPads are out. Yes, they as are they were. out. We figured it would be a good way to kind of Talk about our feelings about the iPad would be to start the show actually using the iPad as our show device, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which so, is very cool. And one thing we do have to say before we get into the show is we're here in San Francisco. We're drinking uh, Coors Light. The guys over at Coors uh, Light have sponsored us again, which is very Coors. cool. And you have to check this out. We're actually using their new, it's not out yet, their new uh, home mm. draft system. We actually have a little, little video of us uh, uh, testing it out real quick. We so we figured out what we were doing wrong. It needs to be on its side. Okay, so now let's let's be smart about this and put a bowl down here. So uh, as you saw us on the show, we're, we're drinking Coors Light from the home draft system. Yes. We have it set up. This is where you're supposed to have this set up in the fridge to keep it cool. Mm -hmm. We just set it up out here well, so we can have it, it during the show. Yeah, it's been um, chilling for 24 hours. So you want to pop the, pull the grenade pin, twist the little bars to get the arrows to align, and then unlock the red tab. So unlock that red tab. It's already been unlocked. Oh, nope. no, there we go. There you go. Unlocked. And now we just pull down, and you'll notice a nice pour going right into the glass there. Very nice. Bam. And we put a little catch. Actually, it does a really good job at stopping the pour, too. Did you notice that? Not yeah. a single drip. Yeah. That's pretty epic, actually. Try tilting it more a little bit, because you're getting a lot of head on those beers. Well, it should be going into the side like that. There you go. There we go. So let's stop that. Dude, that is amazing. Yeah, that's pretty Actually, pimp. how well it stops the beer is really impressive. Well, it's a little bit like, I mean, it's, you know, way better than getting a full kegerator. You know what I mean? Like, you could have a party and just throw this in the fridge and be like, what's up? We got a keg in the fridge. Check out, check out the stop on this now. Watch this. Dude, yeah, that's how pretty, amazing is that? That actually is pretty cool. Sweet. All so, right, so that's how that bad boy works. Yeah, that's how it works. We're going to enjoy a little bit of Coors Light. So there you can see uh, how cool this little home draft system I'm thing is. I'm stoked that we got to use it first. It's pretty awesome. Dude, at parties, man, I would throw that in a couple of those in the fridge. Yep. At pack. So, shall we just get straight into the show? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I have the first story, obviously, is the uh, Apple iPad. Yes. Um, which was a big announcement. Uh, Apple iPad released. It had, like, a crazy, insane amount of digs. There was a bunch of reviews yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just talk about, why don't you start first? So. You went in line, you picked it up, you took it home, you unboxed it. I unboxed it, and... You're it's it. You really kind of shocked about a couple things. One, how light it is, and this is not going to just be an Apple fanboy. Oh, this is the best device. The blah 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 blah. Interesting. I thought there, it was heavy. Oh, I did not. I mean, I I knew it was going to be about this. About mm -hmm. this. There are some issues that I have with it. Uh, there's sort of pros and cons. The pros are first off, the apps are amazing. TweetDeck is just ridiculously cool. Um, some of the other apps that, that I'm, I'm really enjoying, um, Sketchpad HD is really good. The USA Today app, until they turn it on, I'm assuming at some point they're going to turn it on to subscription fee. Until they do that, I'm enjoying it. Netflix streaming, I was literally flying down here on Virgin America, connected to their Wi-Fi, the GoGo in-flight, fired up Netflix and was streaming a movie instantly yeah. in my chair at 35,000 feet. <clears throat> I will say that it did stop, and it really makes you understand that this device without internet connectivity is not all that great. Hmm. It, the because internet almost connectivity, all the apps are internet all of, enabled, right? Almost all of the apps, if not well, all the apps. except for the games. Well, but well, some, some of the games. games. You're actually, you're right. I mean, there's like the, the Wii Rule, which I was excited to try. You can't do it unless you're connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. So I, one of the things that I've really realized is where this is going to sing is when it has 3G. Right. I think that's where these things are really going to 
gonna blow out of the water. But the the interface is amazing. The battery life is unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, email is great. You know, there's a couple things that I think it's force. It's really trying to force itself to do. A good example was last night we were doing some brainstorming on some new project we we're working on, and uh, we just wanted to have a, a common Google Doc. Right. And there was no way to do it on the iPad. You literally, we had to go get the laptop right. to do it. You know. Well, I mean, that's that's early days. Let, let's talk about. Uh, I mean, they will, they will come out with a Google Docs app. Uh, doc sure, app sure. but I think it just goes to the point of I will not want to create a document here on this device. Mm -hmm. I would want to create a document. It still doesn't do that thing. I'll answer emails that I really want, that I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long email. I could do that here on this device. Mm -hmm. I think the keyboard, it, it works enough with that. But if I'm going to do, if I'm going to make a document, you know, or a presentation, I mean, a pages is fine and whatever, I'm going to get on my PC. I'm going to get on my, yeah. my laptop. That There's no question about that. Yeah. I feel as though, I, as, as far as my feelings on it, I, I, <clears> I think that, um, First of all, the, the, the biggest feature and the biggest competitive advantage they have over anyone else yeah. is absolutely the processor, the A5 processor in this thing. It's fast. If you didn't understand, <clears throat> if you don't know the, the history behind this, Apple bought a semiconductor company here a little, over a year ago, and they were making small, mobile, fast chips with low ba battery consumption. Yeah. This is the first launch of that chip. They're calling the Apple A5 processor. And it is extremely snappy. You launch anything, you're like, holy shit. You even notice launching apps like, you know, you can run iPhone apps on here as well. And like the Dig app, for example. Yeah. I have this exact same code base running on, you know, on my phone, my, my yeah. 3GS. And this, and it launches like four times as fast. Yeah. The battery life is insane. Yeah, the battery life is really like, nice. I'm at 63% battery life right now, and I've been using this nonstop for like three days. Not nonstop, yeah. but a good amount of time. Like doing very what we, we would consider to be battery intensive things, like watching a lot of movies. Yeah. Like, um, videos are really a big thing. I'm, I'm very excited about the video stuff. Um, you know, smooth HD rentals through iTunes is, is, is going to be really cool. But, but the thing They're is, hacking this thing. Oh, they the, just the, came out with the jailbreak. So I'm excited to see what, what people are going to be able to in inevitably end up doing but with this the, thing. The thing that's crazy though, the thing you have to consider though, <clears throat> is with the A5 processor in here, mm -hmm. nobody else has this technology, this processor. Yeah. So it's not like uh, Google's going to release a, a iPad competitor. Right. It, that, well, that, HP has that really great, uh, was it the HP Slate or whatever? Did you see the video of that? Yeah, I did. The new but HP. But did they see what the battery life was going to be on that? See, what, no, I'm, what I think I is going to happen, and I'm, I'm curious. Is there going to be high-powered competitors that have le way less battery way life? Way less. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. look at look at what your your phones do. Like, look at the Android phones. Well, like, the, the other battery thing, life kind of sucks on The other them. thing I'm worried about is what's going to happen to the battery life when 3G is built in? When it's always on 3G, uh, it'll be interesting to see how you know what I mean. Hips, yeah, decrease the battery. I mean, life. it might, it might that that kind of uh, those <laughs> kinds of apps running in the background and stuff like that. Plus, you know, one of the other things we're going to talk about today is the possibility of the iPhone 4.0. Yeah, well, like, start and it, you know, let's say there's some multitasking stuff. Obviously, that's going to be pushed to the uh, to the iPad. That would right. seem weird well, not to. Let's talk about that in a, in a few. But but multitasking could really hurt the battery life on these things. Yeah, so. I gotta say the one thing I I'm. Okay, let's talk about the cons, the, the things that we don't like about it, right? Okay. I think the first thing is if you're trying to type on it, and I've tried to type sideways, you can do it, but you feel as though, like, I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm so much faster on a keyboard, it's oh, kind of yeah. killing me, yeah. like, you know, <laughs> and so I don't want to do long emails on it, right. you, and you don't get that tactile feedback, so you're sitting there and you're kind of like, I hope I'm spelling things correctly. It's surprising how accurate it is, and I have had pretty good success when trying to go pretty fast. Yeah. But it's just like, it's not the same, you know? Yeah. And the other thing is I just, there's some experiences on here that it's focused and it's in your face and it's better like Pandora, like right in your right. face. Yeah. But there's certain things like I find myself wanting to go and do at least two things at once. Oh, 100%. You know, I'll be sitting there in Pandora and I'll be like, oh, I'm listening to music, but I kind of want to surf the web here now as yeah. well. But yeah. now I have to exit Pandora I and had, kills. I had, uh, I had um, iTunes open and was downloading some free podcasts for my trip home. And I was literally just staring at the downloads page, and I was like, I would so want this just to be downloading the background and hit this, check in my Twitter, check on some emails, but I can't because right. it's going to stop downloading them because it's not running in the background. Right. So I totally agree with that. The other thing is you and I both both sort of commented on, which is 
you don't quite know how to hold this thing. Yeah, it's weird. It, and, I'm, and, and, I, and I said this last night to you. I said, it, you hold it in a way that you feel like there is going to be a way. At some point, you're going to unlock the way that you go, oh, no, I think you'll just this get is used how I hold it. it. <laughs> I think you'll just get used to it. It's one of these things where you're sitting there and you're like, i got to move my hand. And, yeah. and then you have multi-touch stuff and you're kind of like trying to do so the multi-touch a couple, stuff. There's, yeah, there's a couple other, I think, real issues that I had, which was, you know, when I bought this, I bought two docks, right? I bought a dock for my computer and a dock for my back room. And the back room dock I was just going to plug into the wall, computer dock I was going to plug into my computer, pop it here, it's charging at both places. This does not charge on 99% of all USB Are you ports. Sure about that? This is all over the internet. And it's not a Mac PC thing. It's, it's the fact that most USB ports are 5 volt. This takes 10 volts to charge. Ah. So it, it, there are some ports on some of the newer iMacs. There's like two of the ports on the newer iMacs are, are 10 volt. Um, there's a port, I think, on the MacBook Pro that's 10 volt. Uh, but it will not charge when it's synced to a computer. So now what I've ended up doing is the cradle that I bought, the dock that I bought, that I was going to have connected to my PC, uh, now is just literally connected to the wall. Mm. And you know, and maybe I don't need it because the battery life is so great, but I kind of feel like if it's docked, why wouldn't it be charging? Right. right. What's the point of having it docked and also not charging? So the dock doesn't. The, the dock, dock does not charge if it's connected to a USB port. On oh, it. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, right. I mean, charge. you can plug into the wall, but then it's like, well, I'm sitting at my computer and I have it docked simply to now draw power. Right. But it's like, well, but no, I want it docked so I can be utilizing the connection to my computer. But I'm not going to do that if it's not. So that's one of the drawbacks. Because you want to sync stuff back to your computer. Well, I just feel like if it's sitting next to my computer, it should be connected to my computer so I can. Do stuff, you know. Send videos to it while I'm while I'm playing with Twitter mm. or whatever. I thought of something. What'd What's you that? think of Glenn? Gloves for typing. Air gloves. You can type in the air. Well, or you can type that's in the air like this. that's Put smart. Gloves on and you're like, yeah. I mean, that's so they not have really smart. Keyboards but for it. <laughs> the Bluetooth keyboards. Yeah, but no, but I mean, this is technology where it knows what you're doing. So here's here's what I what I really hope more than anything else is that. As part of a case design, like you know the, these nice cases they have for them, because you want a case. At the end of the day, yeah. you will drop it, shit like that. You don't want a case. I want a case that essentially, built into the case, super thin, is a keyboard, so that you can prop it up like that, set it on its side, yeah. you have your keyboard right there, yeah, I agree. and you can do full entry, and it's just super I agree. slick and thin, so it doesn't take up much extra space. Well, they have some of those, like that rubber keyboard that rolls out. About. I mean, that, if you have that built into the side. Into the side of the case, yeah. You know, the other thing is, and we talked about this before. Um, the, we the, talked about this. The with, fingerprints. With, yeah, well, we talked about it back when they were saying that, you know, they were going to put this, that they were going to stop selling these screen protectors. This screen just grabs fingerprints. It is so hard to not touch this thing, because that's what they want you to do. The fact that they really wanted you to touch the fuck out of this thing, right? as by design, and then they don't have an oil resistant glass or the oil resistant glass that they have, it doesn't really resist oil, and then say, watch video on this, it mm. can become very distracting. And I, I, I don't see the everybody fingerprints I've when shown, it's turned on, though. Like, look at how many fingerprints are on mine. And you go straight on the device, and you don't see well, the but, fingerprints. Yeah, but straight on never happens. What do For you the mean most part, happen? you're going to be tilted off, you know, blah, 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 show a video, blah, blah, really, blah, blah, blah. Does it really show fingerprints? 100%, dude. Look at all the fingerprints that are on that thing. No, I see that. You're, look at how you're holding it to look at the fingerprints. I'm, dude, you can see fingerprints on that thing. I will tell you, it just bugs not, me. It bugs me. And he's a very fingerprinty guy. I am a very fingerprinty guy, but for a device whose sole purpose is for you to put your grubby fingers on the screen, how they didn't figure out a way to get the grubby fingerprints to not show up on the screen seems a little odd. Or the fact that there is a way to get grubby fingerprints to not show up on the screen, but they're not going to admit that oh. they need it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that's the case. I think if <laughs> Apple could do it, they would apply some type of coating to it so that, in fact, they do apply coating to it already. Well, it's not very good coating. But anyway, so, <laughs> so, there's, so there's a few little things. Here's the other thing that I will say, which is I don't think this is a device that is needed. Really? I don't think this is a device that is needed. It doesn't, it, 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 it's just cool. It's just really cool. You know, the iPhone, I was like, this is a device that, I needed this device to come around. Right. My phone right. was in my pocket all day, mm -hmm. and my phone did dick squat for me. Mm -hmm. I needed something that would come in and be like, cool, fun, entertaining, slick, 
do my emails, surf the web when I need to surf the web real quick, you know, mm -hmm. just standing in line. An example, standing in line at the airport, I'm never going to take out an iPad. Oh, I would. I do that over an uh, Dude, my I laptop literally No, 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 no. I would never take out my laptop. Standing in line at an airport, I'm going to pick out my iPhone and read my emails. When I sit down, I may pull out my i i I'll take this out over my laptop any day of the week. Well, Here's what, let me let me but do I a counterpoint to that. But I just don't really think that this device is needed. It's it's an awesome device, and I'm glad I have it, and I love effing around on it. I I just think it's a it's a it's a superfluous device at this point. Okay, so here's here's what at I, this point. here's my take on it. If I'm doing when we talked <clears> about this before, and I thought this was going to be the direction of the device, and and it is for me. If I'm doing a day trip. I'm coming down to LA to visit you. I'm oh, doing somewhere bro. Else. And I have that case that has a little keyboard, so yeah. if I need to do a crazy long email, I can do it. Yeah. This will be my little pocket, throw my backpack, flip it open. I, not I have agree. To get, I pull out my freaking laptop and set it on a special Dude, tray. I definitely like, agree with just, that. It's, it's, it is a great it, travel device. Yeah, it, it, to cafes, to anything. Like This will replace, once the apps get up to speed, to yeah. where I have everything on here that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, and it's almost there. I mean, I got my email, I got my web surfing. I don't have Flash, which kind of bothers me in a way. Um, I've been surprised at how much people are moving over into this uh, HTML5. Which, HTML5, which yeah, we'll talk more of. Well, but not only that, I'm going to sites like, um, was it TechCrunch or Engadget? We just went to, you just showed me a site. You were like, oh yeah, go to the site. And I, oh, you know what? It was, it's actually a story we're going to talk about, about HTML5. The embedded video is a YouTube video, and you just hit play and it goes, right. because clearly it's the embedded version of the HTML5. So people have now started to wise up, and when they start embedding videos on their websites, they'll choose to embed the HTML5 version, because they know people with iPhones now will be able to see. I think it's going to help. This device is going to make an iPhone even better to use because pe because of this device, people are going to start using HTML5 instead of the Flash players more right. frequently, which then means you'll be able to watch it on this device, now, which I think is great. One other thing I want to say, I think this will be a news reading device. I, I absolutely believe that when I wake up in the morning, this is going to be my little flip open, launch the New York Times app, and like have a rich experience. I agree. With a better uh, pre I've, presentation. I've been shocked at more, the USA more Today newspaper-like presentation. Yeah. Do you know when you go to a web page and it's just like kind of like all over the place and there's ads and all this crazy stuff? Like launch the NPR app. Check out the NPR app. It's pretty awesome. It basically. Oh, just, I thought the NPR app was just all radio. Ah, oh, fuck. Is it gosh. actual news stuff? Um, so there's no, articles. there's articles on there, and also like embedded video, so you can just hit play and like listen to watch the video or the audio Dude, or listen I'm to the podcast. That. I was gonna get it's that. pretty awesome. The other one, like a quick dashboard of like your stocks, like on Bloomberg. Bloomberg is good. Like, my stocks. It's like bam. There's all my stocks. Let's take a look at Apple. Boom, there come all the charts up, like quick, just push, jump to like, this is way faster than I could do it on the web. Yeah. Way faster. I agree. And, I like, totally it's agree. It's two seconds. There's all the news on Apple that I want to read about. You know, I turn it sideways, get some extra information. I have the lock on, so it doesn't turn sideways. It's like, it's oh yeah, by the way, that's a lock. That's not a mute button. So FYI, that it's happens. A, yeah, so you, it doesn't rotate on you. Uh, and, and some of the games are pretty fun. You got to admit, I've had, I've had some great game like, experiences. The Smule, um, the Smule songbook, where you can sit there and you be like, okay, I'm gonna play a song like piano like with my fingers. Dude, and that, like, yeah. No, that that is fun. It, it's fun. It's just a different experience. I would never be able to do that on my laptop. You know what I mean? Experience. It's a rich experience. Thank you. Glenn. I will say the other thing is, as and I think it's really gonna be about the accessory devices that come out. I think the case with the with the. Uh, um, Keyboard in is going to be great. Speaker docks for this is going to be great. Listening to Pandora was is such a great experience. Um, but to have, you know, it just coming out of these little speakers in the bottom works. But oh, I see. Yeah, that's that's good. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. And then you just hit the audio there. We're talking about the NPR app. You just hit the audio, and then it's like, bam! I'm going to play it for you right now. Isn't that awesome, bro? I mean, it's just a great way to consume up? shit, right? Yeah, that's really cool to be able to be like, oh, I'm just going to listen to this, blah, blah, blah. But again, for NPR comes from oh, Oracle. what's up? Yeah, you know, hey, I have no problem freaking out No problem NPR whatsoever. Out. NPR fucking. The second ad pops up and he's like, man, well, I have a little bit of a problem helping me NPR out. All right, NPR, let's, <laughs> I, I'm excited for Iron Man 2 as well, but let's get serious. <laughs> so, okay, let, let's, let's, put, let's, let's finish this off with our top yes. five favorite apps for the device, okay? Top five favorite apps, IMDB app, 
for this is ridiculous. Have you seen the IMDb app not. for it? I'm not in so, as much as you are, though. I know, but this is it, dude. If you want to know anything about any movie whatsoever, oh, like movies, like, or or like, I wonder what's Kirsten Stewart up to or Kristen Stewart up to. Here's all. There's images for her. Here's going to be down here. Is going to be all of her movies and stuff that she's in. You mm -hmm. can go around and go. I forgot she was the little girl in Panic Room. Boom. Let's see what the trailer looks like for Panic oh, that's Room. Pretty, pretty. That's a, that's a pretty uh, rich experience. This is definitely a rich experience. And all of a sudden, boom, you're watching the, the preview for Panic Room straight from the app. Mm. And you're going, oh, yeah, I remember Panic Room. That was a fucking, that was a great. Nice. Again, all of this has to be connected to the internet. Yes. This app doesn't even, it d doesn't work at all. All right, so fi fire through the, your other four that you want to. Other four, doing. Netflix streaming, unbelievable. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's just beyond. USA Today for news until they come out with a subscription fee. Okay. Um, right now it's free, so get it and use it, which is great. How many mm -hmm. is that? Three. 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 Um, Pandora, I think, is great. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I mean, the other ones, I'm sure they're going to be way more. Tweet Deck is mm -hmm. the best Twitter application for the so iPod far. or yeah. iPad. So, okay, I'll what give, do you got? give you my five. Uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert. I'm so it's excited. It's a throwback. It's super, <clears throat> like, it's, it's cool. It's great. It's, it, the graphics are a little bit crappy because it's an old game. Yeah. But it's still fun to play. They have multiplayer mode. It's pretty awesome. I'm still waiting for that big Diablo esque oh, game to come out and it's going to blow this thing out yeah. of the water. So that's number one. Number two, I agree with you on TweetDeck. You've yeah. got to have an essential Twitter app. Bloomberg is awesome. Yeah. That's three. Godfinger's a lot of fun. It's a free game uh, by NG Mocha, folks. Uh, I am advisor yeah, yeah, to them, yeah, yeah. but I just want to throw it out there. But it is a good game. I do like it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I like iBooks, the, the, the book reader. Sure. I think it's great. I like the, the, the ability to go and highlight text and, like, save that. And it bookmarks it in a nice uh, place for you. It's better than the Kindle app. There's not as many books on the iBook store. I'm really right. disappointed by the selection. There's hardly anything there that I wanted to read. But um, it's early days, and they're obviously expanding that. Every single day, they're adding more books. Although they did make it seem like they were oh, going to have a lot of stuff. Oh, Sonos. Yeah, Sonos, yeah, yeah. You got to hook me up with the Sonos happen. guys. I want to get some yeah, of that stuff, man. That's all I'm saying. Sonos sounds cool. All right, let's get to the next story, mm. shall we? Yep. A uh, man arrested at the LHC claims he's from the future. It has happened, people. 2,820 people dug this story. Uh, so if you guys know, the LHC, or the Large Hadron Collider, is this, basically it's this giant tube where they're going to slam particles together to simulate the Big Bang and kind of experience how quarks move around and all that quantum physics BS that I don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. We had talked about the possibility of this helping with time travel and that at some point maybe somebody from the future will come. <laughs> I'm out of position myself. I know. You were, it I'm like trying awkward. to like lean on Well, it. look at me. I, I'm, I'm like, should I sit here? Is it like a little bit of like a, a pad? I don't know what's happening here. I know. It's weird. It's a tablet. I actually, I have to say, I thought of a great device, which is just a, it's, it's just a rope. That sticks here, so you just put your <laughs> yeah. hand in it like this. How great would like that be? Like a server tray, and they could like also be? provide beers. There's a necklace that holds it. Or, yeah, or like one a, a flame, a hand flame on either like side. This would be pretty badass. Because, dude, I'm telling you right now, if you could put your palm in there and it was secure, just dude, think of that. We're and you just, just had like, it like so that, and you're like, boo, yeah. You give your friend a high fives when you do cool shit. Horrible. Yeah, or like a thing that goes around your head and just slides in like this. This would be nice. That would be nice. And then you'd be like, bleh. That thing needs a lens. Spit on it. It needs an imaging thing. It needs a lot of stuff. Cameras. Anyway, so so the really crazy thing is this guy who's a would-be saboteur, right? Eloy Cole was strangely dressed and said that he had traveled back in time to prevent the LHC from destroying the world. Where did he arrive? So let me just tell you some stuff about his stuff. He he was. Uh, <laughs> So first off, the LHC has select, successfully collided a particle. So that, is, that has happened. They broke the world record for most particles exploded or whatever the fuck it was. Right. Uh, a record force between particles, whatever. So Mr. Cole was attempting to disrupt this by stopping the supply of Mountain Dew to the experiment's vending machines. This was, he was sent from the future to reduce the Mountain Dew supply in the vending machines because that would be the cause and effect would stop the LHC from, from going on. Uh, he also claimed responsibility for the baguette sabotage, where I guess there was a whole big thing a couple months ago where like all of a sudden all the baguettes that were coming in were like screwed up with. And they were like, why would somebody screw up with the baguettes coming in to feed the, this guy from the future did it? So he said that he was rooting around, they found him rooting around in bins 
and he was looking for fuel for his time machine power unit, a device which resembles a kitchen blender. Now, this is the best part. He was wearing a bow tie and way uh, tons of tweed. He would not reveal the country he was from because he said, and I quote, countries do not exist where I come from. The discovery of the Higgins boson, which is a particle that is a, 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 hypothesized but not actually been discovered, which they're going to try to find with the other, or the God particle as they call it, led to limitless power, the elimination of poverty, and Kit Kats for everyone. It's a communist chocolate hellhole, and I'm here to stop it from ever happening. <laughs> this guy is mad that everybody has, has Kit Kats. Listen, listen. There's something creepy and realistic about this at the same time. Right. Do you feel me? Oh, yeah. Like, Bro, there's something I feel weird you. about It's very 12 Monkey esque. You know what I mean? Where you're like, well, first he's off, crazy, but maybe he's, he's kind of legit. And maybe he's crazy because going through time makes you age. Right. It could make you. That's what happened in freaking 12 Monkeys. Yeah. Dude, you know, the Kit Kat thing could be some bullshit. What did the blender look like? Was it one of those Will It Blend? Dude, did you see the iPad? Did you see the iPad Will It Blend? Did you well, that did dude's you... gonna die of cancer. Did you watch him? I that did. That dad does the Will It Blend stuff, he like shoves like an iPad and there's like all this dust coming off and fucking like, and he's like parts. Mm. He has no masks. He's just, Smells like, like yeah, cancer. He's just like, yeah, he's just like, uh, he's shredding my home. lungs. First it wouldn't fit, so he folds, he breaks it Breaks in half, in half yeah. <laughs> what happened? So, How did this happen? I have no idea. And how do I, and it doesn't, I don't like when it won't give me a back. Uh, just a uh, page up there, there you go. What? Okay, now do a cross swipe. And to a dissolve. And star wipe. <laughs> I'm there. Anywho, uh, so I think that. There you go. That's not really going to take me where I want to go, but that's all right. I think you would have had to have gone. I here. think that uh, he's. It's something scary about that at the same time. Dude, you there's something have to totally scary about that. Are you kidding a little me? Bit. Well, I'm sure they're interviewing the F out of him because at the end of the day, it's going to be like, well, what happens when, you know. And also, he appeared in the weird, a weird spot. Like, if he also just appeared in the center of the device, or like somewhere near, like past high security. Well, that's the thing. And you're like, how'd you get in here? And he's like, I'm from the I'm future. From the future. Like, mm, he'd be like, oh, okay. But also. he's fact that he's like maintenance guy in the vending machine. Yeah, he's, he's in the like, garbage. Dude, you're not from the future. Yeah. If you're from the future, what's my name? And he's like, damn it! I should have studied more for my past test. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Steve Jobs? All right, no. let's, let's, let's so move. anyway, so but freaky shit. Freaky the, shit. The LHC is doing some stuff. Let's see what happens. Yep. I'm sort of holding it between my legs, and I don't know if this is right, but it's happening. All right. <laughs> Next story of the day with 3,782 digs, uh, submitted by Just Gen SF. Update from Jay. Yes. Got some news after five years. 40 million users, an amazing ride. I've decided to step down as CEO of Dig. So interesting. Who's the new acting CEO of Dig? I am for the time what? being. What? Um, it's it's crazy. It's crazy because uh, you know Dig launched uh, in November of two thousand four. Correct. And it was myself, uh, Owen, who was yeah. the first uh, developer on Dig, and Ron Gordeski, uh, yeah, who was the sysadmin. And um, Jay was my friend all along this entire time. I'd known Jay for probably about I since the screensavers, right? Yeah, Didn't you so go interview about him a year before, six yeah. months or a year before um, launching Dig, and then uh, about three or four months into it, like I was, we were starting to really take off, yeah. and there was there was problems with like you know I spent all my own personal funds into into Dig, and I yeah. had a friend that wanted to give me a check for fifty thousand dollars, and I I asked Jay, he was like kind of like an advisor. I'm like, hey, yeah. should I take this check? Which I do because he had started a previous company, Equinix, which is a multi billion dollar company. Yeah, that does it, backbone stuff. It does backbone stuff <laughs> on the internet, and he basically uh, um, came in and I said, dude, I, I need a CEO. I need yeah. you to run this. This is my first time doing this kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Jay, I mean, that was five years ago? Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really, more than anything else, just want to thank Jay for all of his hard work because we really wouldn't have done it without, yeah, without no him. Way. Like, I wouldn't have, I would have made a bunch of wrong decisions and, and well, all and, of the bits of information that he's and provided honestly, me. And honestly, not only Dig.com, but Revision 3 oh, as well. Absolutely. I mean, he was CEO of both companies for a while, and that was not an easy feat. Yeah. You know what I mean? No doubt. So, I mean, thank you, Jay. I'm excited to see what he's going to be working on next because I know he's got crazy ideas uh, dude, and, yeah. and a lot of cool stuff coming. So, that'll be uh, interesting to follow him and his ride throughout that stuff. Uh, you can follow him at, at Jay Adelson on Twitter. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm also excited to uh, to get in and make sure well, Dick's so, kicking some major ass. So what happened? What are some of your first things? I mean, a couple announcements were made today. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. So I talked about the fact that uh, I'm killing the uh, the iframe dig bar. Yes. And so, you know, there were some people that said, 
Um, the majority of responses so far have been like, oh, yes, kill it, blah, blah, it's bad yeah, for their name. Yeah, but yeah. my reasoning behind it is that, you know, it, it breaks a lot of things. Like when you talk about, um, when you draw an iframe on top of a piece of content, that iframe has no way to communicate with the other frame beneath it. So if people Got start, it. like, they would, they would click out on a dig story, get the iframe, start browsing around the net, that bottom frame would be changing, and at the same time, the dig count and everything else at the top of the iframe was, was still there. And it didn't yeah. know that that had changed, so nothing would happen there. And people were bookmarking that, and then it would take them back to the original story versus that site that they were on. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. just really messing up, messing with people. And then also, the frame busters, like New York Times, a bunch of sites that bust out of frames, yeah. they just create a broken experience. So when you click through on a story, all of a sudden the frame just disappears, and you're like, whoa, I normally have the frame, why is it gone? Yeah, right. It's just, when you talk about, I, I, I'm absolutely committed to make sure it's as easy as possible to dig stories on third-party sites. We right. do that through browser extensions today. Those yeah. extensions are gonna get better and cooler and slicker. We got a whole revamp I'm gonna be working on for that stuff. Yeah. But that's not through an iframe. The future of the internet and digging on remote sites is not through an iframe yeah. that doesn't know how to communicate. Yeah, that's, that's just smart. like it's a broken future. Yeah. So why why keep an old product sitting there it's that you know you're gonna kill? It's chocolate loving Kit Kat future. Right, exactly, and no one wants a Kit Kat No one wants that. If they're going to sponsor, we apologize, and we love Kit Kats. Dude, we love Kit Kats if you want to sponsor. But, That's um, it. So anyway, long story short about well, the I'm product really, stuff. I'm really excited about I, it. I'm, a, I'm really, you know, I was doing a lot of angel investing stuff there yeah. for a while, so I was off doing that, helping other entrepreneurs. I'm excited to be back in a dig, like, full-time, like, heads down, and trying to create, you know, the next version of dig, next products we do from iPad apps to iPhone apps to yeah. really creating some compelling stuff. So we'll, we'll see. I'm, I have to say right now, the next six months are going to be crazy. No doubt. For all the stuff that we're doing, the oh, next no six shit. months are going to be crazy. Yeah. Stuff down the pipe that's just going to be, <laughs> you know, big ass pipes, just crazy. big ass pipes. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> no doubt. I love it. Between, all right. between the two of us, we got some crazy shit to announce. Some crazy shit to announce in the next little bit. What up, internet? Little teaser. Uh, actually, nothing was teased, <laughs> except how cool it's going to be. All right, let's get to the next story. Speaking of the iPad and HTML5, Google shows how HTML5 can run Quake in the browser. I think it's actually Quake 2. In the browser, 1,619 people dug this story. Uh, a lot of people have been paying attention to this, to the, you know, we all complained about the flash, the lack mm. of flash. and. You know, as much as I want to believe Jobs in his re retort of it's a buggy product and it crashes It is shit. a buggy product. It crashes all the times in my freaking Chrome and I love Steve Jobs. Okay. And you love Steve Jobs. <laughs> that said, so much slick shit can be done with HTML5. No doubt. So this is, um, this is video. Running in HTML5. Running in HTML5. It's actually HTML5 video. Of HTML5 of running. Of Quake 2 being played in a browser. A little loud. This is actually just happening in browser, right? Is that insane? And that's pretty slick. No it's also plug doing needed. no plugin needed. It's also doing the the WebGL, the OpenGL 3D stuff, which is great. I mean, look, the the crazy thing is this is an older game, but dude, that is amazing because here it is playing in browser. That means that I could play this on the iPad in browser. Yep. Actually, I might be able to just go to that website and play it in browser, now that I think about it. I actually think you're playing it right now. Oh, I'm doing great. It also has AI coding. No, I'm just kidding. So this is, I mean, this just goes to show you how, and that's also was HTML5, I mean, the HTML5 YouTube stuff is, is great. There's no reason why you wouldn't use HTML5 web embeds so on your site anymore. Let why would why would you why would you do a flash player embed on your site nowadays? It, you know it's funny. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I mean, well, there's six point five million people or however many HTML5 if you do a YouTube embed. I think like that they, they, is probably happening because yeah. it makes perfect sense. So here's let me throw out something I want to I want to just throw it out. Throw this out there. Just throw my iPad out. One of the things I think is cool about Apple, and you're gonna call me fanboy for saying this, but you gotta admit this is true. Hold on, hold on. One thing that's cool is that they don't have their their window into the future is not. They're not concerned about what's happening in the next three months. They're concerned what's happening in the next couple of years. So when they denied Flash, they knew that HTML5 and all this stuff was coming, right? So they're like, this is gonna be our savior, we're fine here, blah, blah, blah. Another example, when they came out with the iPhone, everyone was like, we want apps, make it so we can do our own apps, it was being hacked. They didn't say a thing. They're like, these are the apps you get. Everyone's like, it's not an open system. And then bam, like six months later, they're like, App Store, open development, you're in this. I have a feeling 
The same thing is happening with multi, uh, multitasking, with a bunch of shit that we want. They have, they know that these are killer features. They know that we want to be able to listen to Pandora and do something else at the same time. Mm. I guarantee you they're working on a solution for that. They just don't like to pre-announce stuff. Well, I agree. I definitely agree with that. I think that they are looking into this. They can't. They can't ignore as much of the calls for you. Got to be kidding me with not having multi multitask. What I'm hoping they do is what Windows Seven, the Windows Seven phone, phone is going to be doing, which is what they call smart multitasking, which is knowing that certain sh certain apps should be able to be multitask, like Pandora. Oh, what does the app do? Well, it streams audio. Okay, well that should probably be allowed to be working in the background. You know what I mean? Rather than like, well, I have a video game. Oh, it's accidentally running in the background because I hit the button and it didn't yeah, turn it off. Yeah, that just seems like a little bit like communist. Like you don't want to, you don't want to lock down like and say like only certain apps can run in the background. <clears throat> not not only certain apps can run in the background, but there are apps that you should, as a developer, be able to choose whether your app can run in the back. If I develop a game that's a video game, you know, side scroll or whatever, if I'm going to allow it to be a multi or a multitaskable uh, app. What I would do is know, as soon as the focus comes off of my game, pause, stop using processor power. Right. Right? But I, as a developer, should be able to choose that. Right. You know what I mean? No, I agree. I think that uh, I would love, I mean, I know this, this is the geeky I mean, they would never make this as a consumer-facing feature. Right. But it would be really cool if I had multitasking turned on, and if an app's eating up all my shit, it would say, like, yeah, give me a notification, like, there's an app that's consuming 10% of your battery life every five minutes because it freaking it's running in the background. They're never like, going to do that. I know they never do that, but, like, you, that, They don't the even show me, you the operate like, the fucking file system. You can't even save a file to a place I would on this love, thing. like, even if it's They're a They're not going to be able to kill fucking processes. Even if, I, well, they do on the freaking Android. But well, even, but yeah, it's a different machine. Even if it's like a notification, like an intensity meter or something, letting me know like how many apps I have open, I should close some. Because the problem that Apple is running into is that you run four or five applications, and all of a sudden, all this yeah, great stuff we've been yeah. talking about about battery life and the processor and it, it goes gets out chunked. of the window. Yeah. It goes out the window, and all of a sudden, you're like, "Wow, this thing lasts two hours on battery life." Well, let's move into the next story because I think yes. the next story. Well. Is this the last story? Yeah, sponsors. Okay, let's do sponsors, and then we're going to move into the next story because that story, it really touches on what it is that we're actually going to be talking about, which is the multitasking possibilities of this. Of yes, this. sponsors, Netflix. Netflix delivers movies directly to your home while saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get DVDs by mail in about one business day. Mm -hmm. Plus, you can instantly watch movies of TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV via Netflix devices. Or like the Xbox iPad. 3C, PS3, and Nintendo Wii console. Or, we, we gotta update that copy, because it yeah, goes to the iPad, iPad now. Yeah. Um, watching as many movies as you want, shipping is free, and you'll never have any late fees or due dates. Keep the movies as long as you like. DVDs by mail, plus instantly write to your TV. Get unlimited movies two ways for only $8.99 a month, and as a new Dignation viewer, you get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash Dignation and sign up now. For the Netflix nice. App, you have to have a, an account, right? Obviously. You have to have an account for the Netflix app. I mean, you can have the Netflix app, but then you have to log into the Netflix, your Netflix account to be able to do it. Also, we are super excited to have our boys and girls from Coors back. Yes. Uh, we've become huge fans of Coors Light just simply from the fact that they've been sponsoring our show. Uh, you know, we've been drinking. Well, not from the fact that they've been sponsoring our show. No, but no, no. But the, fa the fact that they were sponsoring the show got us to be drinking Coors Light as regular Coors Light drinkers. And then we found um, ourselves drinking Coors Light. Like, we'd be at bars and be like, oh, Coors Light. And then we'd be like, they're not even sponsoring us. Right I know. Now. I was like, what it's are we doing? We're at a bar. Uh, but also, it was super excited that, that we got to show off the brand new product that's coming out soon the Coors Light home draft system. It's cold beer done right at home. You just pull that thing, uh, put that thing right in the fridge, just like that, chill it out. Bam, cool it. I don't think it has the cold activated mountains on there, which they should slam on there for no reason. It might. Oh, it does. It does. It might. It oh, does. cold activated. What up? Look for the mountains. Pour that stuff. Uh, Coors Light <laughs> Home uh, Draft is designed to deliver a true draft beer experience from home. Comes with a CO2 pressurized canister that keeps the beer fresh for 30 days. Wow. That's good, That man. is awesome. Tap Systems delivers a perfect pour. Ideal way to enjoy refreshing beer at draft at home. Great. So much cheaper than a kegerator. Right? Yep. You just buy it, boom, set it and forget it. It's like romp appeal. Love it. So check it out, days. Coors Light. 30 days is epic, dude. 30 days is perfect because if you, you know, you don't want to skunk a beer. Right. You know what I mean? It's, especially like if you have something like that and it's just a couple friends that's going to take you like a few weeks to get through or whatever, yeah. you know? It's like, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So GoDaddy, your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be and Correct. worried that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. 
So turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage, my friends. Boom, yeah. With the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. Shukong. Plus enter the code sounds. DM1 <laughs> to receive 10% off any order. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the list of amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. Also, if you haven't checked out ByteJacker yet, do it. Hosted by Anthony Carboni, ByteJacker covers the best of the world of independent downloadable video games. They're probably going to do some video games for the iPad, which would be great. Uh, with in-depth reviews and analysis every week, ByteJacker tells you what you should get from the Xbox Live Marketplace, WiiWare, iPhone, assuming iPad pretty soon. Every Thursday, revision3.com slash ByteJacker. Jacker, you know what? The one thing I'm going to say, I think this might be the best hosting device ever. Why? This was awesome. Hosting the show with this? In versus a laptop? Yeah. What made it so much better? I don't know. It just, it just feels lighter. Like lighter. I feel like I'm, like you I'm not you consumed. I can dance if I want to. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your phone at home. But <laughs> if you don't dance, I don't want to dance. Your man alone. Go. You're, oh, you're right. next. Uh, Last story of the day, Apple holding iPhone OS 4 event April 8th, 2,700 digs submitted by uh, Scroll Alpha too far. Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Alpha Phoenix. So uh, we don't know what they're going to be announcing. but well, We have some ideas. Yeah, we have some ideas. There's some speculation. There, multitasking is the biggest one that everybody wants. Wants, but there's also speculation. There was a, there was a little piece of information popped out um, by... Uh, what, isn't the one that you said you were reading that they were in the iPhone, the new App OS SDK? Oh, they they, beta, they, they said a, something some about multitasking. Or something or multitasking? There, there was a comment about multitasking there. Uh, so they're, they're predicting that's going to be the big one. Somebody else here in the dead comments is asking for porn mode for Safari, please. Awesome. Because they don't have private browsing yet in Safari on the. Uh, awesome. Who browses porn on their iPhone? I don't, oh, Glenn does. No. I saw that face. That was a little bit of a porn. Was, he was like, face. I don't. No, yeah. Nobody like me. <laughs> what would I do? That? <laughs> <laughs> he pulled out clear his cash. Like, clear his clear cash. Clear right his cash. <laughs> he was like, go to settings, clear cash, clear cash. I don't even think there's a clear cash button in yeah, here. Yeah, there is. It's, it's an, oh shit. Oh. oh no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Who it's, it's searched for porn? Is there I did not. The iPhone Safari. No, that's what they're. That's no, no, what you're but saying. you mean an iPad is what you meant. Oh yeah, dude. Clear history. Is there an iPad? No. No, there's not. Where would it be? I, I mean, don't know. there's no settings. There's no settings. Oh wait, no, the settings are in here. But that would be weird that you'd have to go to settings in order to go to porn mode. Yeah. They should just call it porn mode. Why are they even? Hmm. Clear autofill search engine. Oh, I can change my search engine. Boo. So I mean. Anyway. What else? What would what you else? like? I don't what would know. you like? I think that it's got kind of everything I want. Those gloves. Oh, multitasking. <laughs> multitasking would be good, obviously. Um. That's what everyone's asking for. I'm looking at the comments well, right now. Well, they have a lot of stuff. I mean, there's already so much good stuff. Oh, unified IM application. That could be cool. I would love an IM application from Apple. That would be that good. That does like AIM, Yahoo, Google Chat, you know, all that. Oh, text. Yeah, unified would be awesome. What do you mean text? Meaning like having one central location for your text messages, your IM, like everything. Like the uh, this guy made a point here, uh, Tay B, said that... Um, the what do you call it does that well? The uh, Palm Pre does a good job of that. Oh like yeah, one yeah. One centralized app for everything. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that could. I mean, that could slow down. It's because not everybody uses IM. You know what I mean? Yeah. Allowing third-party apps to compete with Apple's native apps, Mail and Safari. Oh, hell yes. definitely, definitely. I would love Google to Voice, see Google Voice. Absolutely. Yeah, Google Voice would be good. A Google Docs app from Google would be great. Backgrounds. Backgrounds would be cool. Yeah, some more, good more skins, actually. themes for the. Even if it's even if you have to be a pro designer and submit your themes, even if you have to buy the themes, something to just make it a little bit less, you know, iPad-y, mm -hmm. as it were, or yep. iPhone-y. Um, I'm excited, dude. Apple's doing some crazy stuff, man. They met expectations big time. They said that they surpassed 300,000 units sold the first day. What was their expectations for that? Do you know? Uh, they did like 50% more. I think it was actually 600 600,000. Uh, iPad, iPads the first day was I think no, what they ended that, up getting. No, that was a rumor. It was actually uh, three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. Uh, that's good, dude. But they said that they're that was double what they had anticipated. So. Yeah. So that's it uh, for the show. Let's yeah. let's let's uh, do our buy or don't so, buy. On well, the a iPad. couple things before we do that. Um, 
if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to Dig the Dig Nation feed in iTunes. We haven't been talking about the iTunes feed yeah, in like did six tell years. You to bring that up or no, no, I just thought about it. I was like, why are we not saying that? If you haven't subscribed, go to iTunes and subscribe to the feed. Yeah, and you can get it on your iPad too. You can get it on your iPad. Buy or don't buy. If you have the money, if you can afford it, if this isn't going to put you out, buy it in, in a heartbeat. You'll have fun with it. You'll have fun with it. You'll find ways in the next two to three months, ways of using this device are going to come out that ha nobody has even thought of, which I'm very, very, very excited that's about. What, that's what I'm saying. If, if you're on the fence, I would say, and you're kind of yeah. like, eh, it would be tight if I spent the money on this device right now. Mm. At least wait for the, the 3G version to come the out. The 3G version is, is where days. this. I think this thing is going to sing. I was, not, I was adamant against getting the 3G version. I was not going to do it because I didn't want the monthly. Mm -hmm. How much is the monthly? I think it's more than 20 bucks. So it's like around there, it's like 20 bucks. Oh, it's like 20 bucks, okay, yeah. it's not bad. Uh, now that I've played with this, this is definitely going to be either this will become Heather's iPad, <laughs> which is probably what will happen and I'll just get the 3G version, um, or this will become a sold iPad and I will get a 3G version. Yeah, I feel um, the same way. I, I'm gonna have to have it, because sometimes you're just there and there's no Wi-Fi. And dude, you, it, I, I'm just thinking about this. I'm going, to, I'm going to the airport right now. There's Wi-Fi there. soon. There's Wi-Fi there, yeah, but most of the airports, you have to buy the Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to go and continually buy Wi-Fi. That's going to cost me 20 bucks a month. Right. You might as well just have might a 3G. Might as well just have a 3G and then I don't even need to worry about it. Wherever you are, Why don't you you, just there you buy are. A, a MiFi and you can use it on that. You, you could use a MiFi. That's a good point. You could use a MiFi. I have a MiFi, but then you have to have a separate charger for your MiFi when it dries uh, dries out. Yeah. But the other thing is is that Batteries. that also does talk about the Sprint 4G. Oh god. 4G is such bullshit, dude. Dude, 10 times faster than no, 3G? No, it's, it's, it's a, it's a why lie. Are you, why? Dude, there was a story the other day. I don't know if it was on, it was on one of these tech sites. Dude, 4 is no, better no, than 3. I know 4 is better than 3. It's a lie, though, dude. It's it's like, they're they're not even using real 4G technology. Like, you should see the story. It's really I'm good. I'm going to read the story, but It whatever. talks about downward. They do all the comparisons. Well, that is it for this week's iPad edition of Dig Nation. Cheers. I'm Alex Albrecht. Cheers. Kevin Rose. And Until next time, did you chip mine? Once, you fucker. By the way. First day. That's all right. I, hold on, it's hold on. not my 3G you one. Yeah, it is. I was like, I was like, I was, my friends were sitting by me. I'm like, look at how you can swivel it like this, and it goes, whoop, like right out of my oh, hands. Amazing. <laughs> oh fuck. Everyone in the because I go to this cafe and no one's seen it yet because I just got done with the yeah, Apple yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of like looking. Dude, over. by the way, it's I like, had whoop, one before you. Bam. Did. So I know happy. You did. I know so you did. happy. Look who's an Apple fanboy now. Oh, by the way, what? Last little thing. You're fucking using an Apple now, dude. Don't tell me you're not. I've been You've using converted. an app. I've been using yeah. an Apple for you have ages. You've now converted computers to an Apple. You are now an Apple user on a computer. That's not true. My computer is my PC at no, home. No, 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 dude. This is OS 10. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's OS 10 with a fucking skin on it that makes me not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you next week uh, from converted. New York. From New, from New York. Are we? Can we announce that we're going to be on the Jimmy Fallon show, or what's up? Yeah. Okay, we're going to be on is the Jimmy Fallon show. For sure? We don't know if the date's locked. 16th. 16th. Or it's actually <coughs> Friday the 16th. Yeah. We're going to be in New York. What's up, bitches? Talk to you later. See you guys. Peace.